Georgia mom wants to know who's responsible for the hit and run that's left her nine-year-old baby girl in the hospital. Ladaria Holmes's condition has been upgraded from critical to stable condition, so that's good news there, according to the family. But she has a fractured skull and broken pelvis, and she will now have to learn how to walk all over again. Police are trying to find the person behind the wheel of this vehicle speeding into the home in the front yard. She was out there playing with a friend when this happened. This whole thing caught on video near Atlanta on Friday. Now, investigators say they have good leads on a suspect, but so far, no one has been arrested in this. Earlier, mom, Charlotte Bolton, talked about hearing the crash. I screamed my baby because I knew she was on the porch. Um, I ran down. Um, um, a lady um, was um, had got my baby from between the car and my house and um, placed her and her friend on the ground, and um, she was lifeless. Um, I was screaming, um, my 12-year-old son and another gentleman start doing CPR on her, and that's when I start working on her. I felt a heartbeat. Bob Bianchi is a former prosecutor and a host with Law and Crime Network. He joins us now via Skype. Good morning, Bob. You know, obviously having your heart hurts for that mother having to relive these moments. Do you think that surveillance video, was? it is pretty good. Is it good enough, though, to catch the bad guys? Oh, good morning, Cheyenne. Well, first off, this has special impact on me. My mom was hit by a hit-and-run drunk driver when she was 18, pronounced dead, uh, broke her pelvis and skull, and lived a lifetime. She, Thank God she survived, but lived a lifetime of uh, pain and suffering, having to learn to walk again just like this little girl. Uh, so to answer your question directly, I believe the police are going to have copious amounts of evidence. The surveillance video is important. It's going to get out to the public. There will completely be people that are going to call in there. But most importantly is the vehicle itself. Itself. It's very hard to be involved in a collision like that without leaving DNA behind, fingerprint evidence. So when you combine the public outcry here, the video surveillance, uh, that kind of leads to a partial identification with regard to the evidence that undoubtedly was left inside the vehicle, the police and prosecutors are going to have a lot of leads, a lot of investigative leads. It's no question in my mind these individuals will get caught. And you see, uh, you know, in the video, two people running. Is the passenger just as guilty here? You know... Uh, that's a good question, but my instinct is to say no. In Georgia, I looked up their law. There is an actual affirmative requirement for the driver of a vehicle to stop and render aid. And that's a little unusual, the idea of rendering aid. So it's not just stopping, but rendering aid. But that only applies to the driver. To the passenger of the vehicle, I think that that individual is going to have a defense because they weren't, in fact, driving the vehicle, at least as we know right now, did not contribute to the accident. So they kind of were really a, a, a bystander, if you will will that left the scene of an accident. And there is no affirmative obligation in my mind for somebody who did not cause the accident to stop and render aid. Wow. Well, if the suspect is caught, uh, could consequences be worse because the driver ran away? That's a great question, Cheyenne, because you get right into the heart of what it was that I did when I was a prosecutor. When I was leading an agency, if I were to look at a hit and run, whether it was a DUI or some other reason, the person stopped, tried to do the right thing, rendered aid, contacted emergency services, I see that case one way, not that it wouldn't be punishment, but when I see on top of that that they saw a little girl that they believed that, you know, was dead or seriously injured and they ran away from the scene, that's the kind of case we call an aggravating factor that would cause me to look for the maximum sentence on this because I, as a prosecutor, would feel I need to send a message. If you get into an accident like this, especially when you're talking about a kid, but for anybody for that matter, and you don't stay there pursuant to the law, you don't attempt to render aid or call 911, then you are going to pay the consequences with a lengthy state prison sentence. In cases you review, do you, do you feel like as video like this is played over and over again and those you know, um, people running, would the guilt eventually set in or maybe someone nearby that knows something or heard something about this, maybe they would come forward? One of the problems that you have, Cheyenne, another great question is that a lot of people kind of don't want to get involved and they kind of, if you remember the old Kitty Genovese case, they kind of only look at it like, well, somebody else will call and somebody else, uh, you know, will be the person that will, will uh, report this. No, you need to do that. Whether or not five people do it or 10 people do it, if you know something about it, you need to get out there and do it to, the uh, to report it. To the second part of your question, it's been my experience that people don't have an overwhelming sense of guilt and decide to come forward. But as a defense lawyer now, 
now, if somebody were to come to me and said I was the person involved in this, it would be my, you know, it, it, you're in a difficult position there because you don't know whether the police have enough evidence. But certainly if you turn yourself in afterwards while you're locking yourself into the idea that you did this, uh, the prosecutor may show some level of mercy on you with regard to the fact that at least you came to your senses and came forward. But I'm sure that most of the great defense lawyers would say don't do anything because we don't know if the police have enough information to even identify you as the driver. Great information, Bob Bianchi. Thank you so much.